Hello there, my friendly pyromaniacs, and welcome back to some 40k lore. In today's Legion video, it is the turn of the Salamanders to have some of their elite units explained a little bit. Now, unlike some other stuff we covered in this sub-series, like the Space Wolves or the Word Bearers, the Salamanders actually don't have as much lore for their elite units. Still, we are gonna learn a few things about the Fire Drakes, the Pyroclasts, and the Pyre Guard. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Let us begin today with the Fire Drakes. Created during the Great Crusade by the Primarch Vulcan, the Fire Drakes were named after the greatest of Saurians, said to originate beneath the stones of Mount Deathfire the greatest volcano on the world of Nocturne. They were the finest and most experienced warriors of the ancient 18th Legion, and later of the Salamanders chapter. To be afforded this exalted status, simple skill at arms was not enough, and the warrior would have to have proven his faultless bravery, and, just as importantly, his faultless self-control. Among these Astartes, the greatest of the pre-Horus Heresy era would form the Pyre Guard, the Primarch's own loyal retainers and honor guard. But more on them in a few minutes. The Fire Drakes were present at a tragic dropside massacre at Istvan V, where the Salamanders, alongside the Raven Guard and the Iron Hands, were all but annihilated. Through their tenacity, sheer determination, and extraordinary valor, some of these elite warriors did manage to survive that slaughter committed by the traitor legions. Tried and tempered in the flames of war, just as a blade was tempered in the flame of the forge, the fire drakes were indefatigable and relentless, possessing a single focus in battle which bordered on the supernatural and legendary resilience. A matter as much to do with their phenomenal willpower, as much as their transhuman physiology or incredibly fashioned weapons and armor. Such was the wisdom of Vulcan and the traditions of the 18th Legion that many of the Fire Drakes could be found fulfilling other roles throughout the ranks of the Legion, rather than being just concentrated into elite cadres as was found in other legions. This was the better way to serve as exemplars, champions, and protectors. Exception to this did exist, however, like the Pyre Guard, who served as the Praetorians and advisors of the Primarch. Also, warrior bands of fire drakes, most commonly clad in exquisitely crafted Terminator armor, who were formed to act as shock troops and line breakers of the Legion in the most deadly battles it undertook. In the modern era, the fire drakes are still the Salamander chapter's powerful and formidable first company, their members still chosen from the Salamander's greatest veterans. The bellicose reputation of the fire drakes is legendary, even among other Space Marine chapters and stories of their might and valor are recorded in dozens of sources, from the heroic sagas of the Space Wolves to the labyrinthine texts of the Red Talons' Strife Chronicles. In addition to providing the chapter with a veteran corps of elite warriors, the Fire Drakes also serve as garrison and guardians of the Salamander's fortress monastery on Prometheus. This battle station, whose foundations are sunk deep into the moon's surface, as well as serving as the chapter's armory, apothecarian, and reliquary, is rumored to also house in its deepest vaults hidden forges and workshops, whose sophistication are said to be the equal of any but those found on Mars. The fire drakes of modern times, of which chapter master Tu Shan is the captain, as well as the regent of Prometheus, are barracked on the moon of Prometheus along with the chapter master himself the only salamanders whose garrison is not among the civilian population of Nocturne. Unlike their fellow battle brothers, the fire drakes are barely ever seen on the surface of Nocturne, where other salamanders cohabit with the unaugmented human population, albeit often as part of a solitary lifestyle. Their rites are ancient and clandestine, conducted by the chapter master himself. Only those who have undergone the most heinous of trials and endured hardship beyond belief could ever hope to aspire to become a fire drake. Meanwhile, the Pyre Guard were the seven veteran brothers of the Salamanders who served as the Primarch Vulcan's elite honor guard during the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. Sworn to protect the Primarch, they were warriors set apart from the rest of the 18th. 
they were not like other salamanders. They had more fire and they had more fury. Like the volcanoes of ancient Nocturne, the great jagged mountain chains of the Dragon Spike and Mount Defire, they were perpetually on the brink of eruption. Even the warriors of the Pyro class were not as volatile. Just like the samurai of old Nihon, they were fighters foremost, who could ally as a unit or function expertly on their own. They were also leaders in their own right, and each pyre guard commanded a chapter of the legion in addition to their duties as the Primarch's inner circle. When Vulcan was reunited with the legion on Nocturne, he saw the potential in his few remaining Terran sons. From among these, he chose the most stoic and fiercely independent warriors. Those who had already endured the worst of the trials and tribulations throughout the early years of the Great Crusade before he had been found by the Emperor. And from these chosen few, the Primarch founded the Pyre Guard, a personal honor guard unit charged with the protection of the Primarch and to act as an inner circle of advisors and champions. The Pyre Guard displayed a level of self-sacrifice and self-sufficiency that exceeded all others. Although Terran-born, they still displayed the physical traits of onyx black skin and red eyes, an irreversible reaction to the unique radiation of Nocturne, combined with the genetic heritage of the Primarch. The Pyre Guard's number always stood at seven, a number of great significance to the people of Nocturne itself. When they marched to war with the Primarch, every one of their personal weapons was forged by its bearer, and every one could spit fire like the drakes of ancient days. Maybe the most well-regarded Pyre Guard of all time was Artelus Numion. Now, we could actually make at least a couple of videos just on the story of this guy, but today we're just gonna summarize it. Numion was a Terran-born salamander who served as the first captain of the Legion's first company, even then known as the Fire Drakes. He was also the equerry to the Primarch and commanded the Pyre Guard. Numion was there during the tragic events of the Dropside Massacre, where the Legion was nigh on extinguished. He survived the traitor's trap and eventually made his way off that scoured planet to carry on the war against the traitor legions. His ultimate fate would lead him to Macrag, where he met up with other surviving salamanders. Then Numion led them off-world with the body of Vulcan to return it to Nocturne. He would eventually sacrifice himself on Nocturne to resurrect Vulcan deep within Mount Defire. He was originally known to favor a mastercrafted power halberd with a built-in Volkite weapon and boulder. Finally for today, we have the Pyroclasts. These guys were a specialist formation akin to a Legion destroyer squad. It was a uniquely equipped formation that carried prototype and highly adaptable flame weapons into battle bringing utter destruction to their foes with cleansing, purifying fire. The Pyroclasts were the burning fury of the Salamanders given physical form. The Salamanders shunned conventional Legion destroy units in their Legion, save for a small cadre retained for Xenocide operation due to the training and unclean nature of the weapons they wielded. Vulcan would create the Pyroclasts to fulfill the role of bringers of utter destruction instead creating for them advanced and very potent thermal and incendiary weapons of his own design. The Pyroclasts embodied the Promethean Mantra, destruction and renewal through the purification of cleansing fire. To the Salamanders, fire is more than merely a weapon. It almost has a mystical function and truth, embodying both purifying destruction and the potential for rebirth and redemption. But for renewal to occur, what has gone before has to be wiped away, purified by fire. And it is this last concept that the Pyroclast embodied. And in battle, they were relentless and remorseless. And where they were unleashed, there could be no possibility of mercy or reprieve from the fire. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to narrate for you today on some of the elites of the Salamander's Legion. If there is one thing I noticed about them, it's the fact that they are almost interchangeable to some degree. And that they don't have a particularly distinct identity like the honor gods of other legions. I'm not saying this is a bad thing because flexibility is usually a good thing. But we could uncover them as distinctly as the Sekhmet of the Thousand Suns, for example.
Just my two thoughts. I would like to read your thoughts on these specialists, whether good or bad, in the comments below though. If you found this informative, do leave a like, share, subscribe, and click the bell icon for future content. Thanks a lot, and have a healthy and awesome day. The Emperor Protects.